In this tape, we will cover Yokomenuchi applications. We use the term Yokomenuchi just as it is employed in the sword arts. It is said that Aikido comes from the sword, but recently there are many people of the opinion that study of the sword is unnecessary in Aikido. However, from my standpoint, as long as Aikido is to be considered as a martial art, its basis is the sword, and I will endeavor to explain these techniques emphasizing the sword in all of its facets. In so doing, we can see the true martial quality of Aikido techniques. One of the most representative techniques of the Yokomenuchi series is Yokomenuchi Shihonage. There are a number of problems with the execution of this technique. I would like to begin by explaining the major differences between the ways this technique is commonly taught and our method of doing Yokomenuchi Shihonage. One of the main problems with this technique is the use of the hand in the basic strike. Most Aikido practitioners stand this way and extend their hands. This is not tegatana, the hand blade. If you were to strike this way, you would just injure your own hand. It shouldn't be done this way. If you are going to use the hand like a sword, you must position your hand as though you are holding a sword. This is the proper way of holding the sword. This is how you hold it. I release my hand. I grasp the sword. This is the correct way of grasping the sword. You must firmly hold the sword with your thumb and little finger. From this position, you can execute the various striking and thrusting movements using the sword. Of course, there are about 12 ways of using the hand, and they all start from here. Hiraken, Ipponken, Seiken. These are the basic forms. It is completely wrong to assume this stance. You must raise your hand straight over your head in order to strike correctly. Most people begin their strike from here, the side of the head. This is proof that a person has not practiced the sword properly. You can't cut anything this way. The shomen and yokomen strikes are all the same at this point. It's not done like this. You must first correct this mistake before beginning training with the sword. The next thing is where to strike. People usually execute the Yokomenuchi strike to this point. In a real situation, this is unthinkable. This is very ineffective. No one in a realistic situation on a battlefield would cut here because it is ineffective. It's hard to cut. In a real situation, you must strike to these vital points. That's the way it should be done. Aikidoka don't close their hands when they strike. Karate practitioners who strengthen their hands don't strike that way. They know it's not effective, so naturally they don't strike that way. 
So what is the purpose of Aikidoka, who haven't even strengthened their hands, striking in such an ineffective way? That's the problem with this way of striking. This is where we strike. Here and here. With the sword, of course, you strike the shoulder. We have made various corrections and developed this way of doing it. The point we strike in our way of executing the Yokominuchi strike is different from the usual way of doing it. I would like to demonstrate Yokominuchi techniques with this in mind. This is the difference between our way of doing shihonage and the way it is done usually. In the usual form of shihonage, the strike is received. This is the usual shihonage. This probably describes the way it is done in 99% of the cases in Aikido. This is the way it's usually done in Japan and abroad. It's already been about 35 years since we stopped doing it that way. We have already taken our opponent's initiative. Block and counter. That's the way it's been done in Japanese martial arts for hundreds of years. That's the way it's done in fighting arts everywhere. You can't consider this way of doing it to be Aikido. Aikido doesn't need that way of doing things. You have to have already defeated your opponent before being touched. You can't attempt to grab after being struck. Our way of doing it is to enter, thus preventing him from striking. That's how we execute the movement. Our way of grabbing is different too. Usually people enter like this using this kind of movement. This is the way it looks from the front. In the usual way you execute the movement after receiving the strike. We enter directly. The usual way is to first receive the attack and then enter. Our way of doing it is to already take the opponent's mind before receiving the strike. That's how we do it. This is how we enter. Once again. This is how we execute Yokominuchi Shihonage. Next, let's take a look at Yokominuchi Iriminage. Already at this stage, we lead the opponent to here. At this stage, we bring him here. Let's now look at Yokominuchi Kotegaishi. We will do two variations, 
And I'll demonstrate the first one now. Like this. Now I'll show the second variation of Kotegaishi. This time I won't use this hand very much. I bring him around like this. The reason for this is, we are treating it like a punching attack. We already enter. This is how we deal with the punch. We do it this way. Now I'll demonstrate Yokomenuchi Gokyo. There are some problems with Gokyo also. The way this is normally done in the Aikido world, like before I would say in about 99% of the cases, is this way. This is one of the old ways of doing it in the martial arts world. You block and then enter. We do it differently. In Aikido, we enter with a strike before the opponent's attack reaches us. 
Usually, it's done like this. This way is the beginner's way to do it, and it's not effective. Karate does it this way. Everybody does it this way. We don't have to do such things in Aikido. We have already taken our opponent's mind before he touches us. That is the Aikido way of doing it. We enter before the opponent touches us. This is how we execute the movement. In the case of Gokyo, we hold the jo in the center. We move the jo like this. We move like this. I can't reach him this way. By doing it this way, we can execute the movement freely. We close the distance and enter here. Next, I'll demonstrate Yokomunuchi Nikyo. This movement also is similar to dealing with a ski or punch. Naturally, this movement is used. We cut his eyes. Then we apply the pressure. That's what we keep in mind when doing this technique.
それでは次に Next, そこまでに行きたいと思います。This hand appears to be receiving the attack, but it is not. We enter like this and can execute these atemi strikes. The attacker comes and we can immediately execute atemi. If the attacker comes really hard, we lead him this way. We execute the movement this way against the attack. Now, I'll show two variations of Yokominuchi Sankyo. This is the first variation. Now, this is the second Sankyo variation. Next, I'll demonstrate Yokominuchi Koshinage. When he attacks, we execute Atemi and take his balance this way. We break his balance with the Atemi. Now, I'll demonstrate Yokominuchi Kotegaeshi. Here the Atemi is important. We do it this way. We come in directly from the front. That's how we do it. Recently, we have made certain changes to our way of doing the yokomen techniques. The reason for this is, as I explained, related to the tegatana or hand blade 
and the sword. We first do the technique with the ken and then the jo. I'd like to show the changes in the ikkyo, nikkyo, and sankyo techniques. This is Shihonage, as I have shown earlier. In this way of doing it, we enter here. In this version, we enter in this manner. We use the tegatana at the opponent's throat, and then we proceed. That's the way we perform shihonage. So we enter this way and complete the technique. Now I will show this using the ken. We execute the technique in this manner. Once again. And once more. Next, I'll execute the technique using the jo. This time, since he is coming to cut with a ken, we use the jo like this. We come to his chin and then come here. Instead of cutting with the ken, we strike here with the jo. We do it like this and enter. Now I'll show you the ikkyo techniques done first empty-handed, and then I'll demonstrate various applications using the ken and jo. Now I'll demonstrate Nikyo first empty-handed and applications with the Ken and Jo.
Now I'll show Sankyo beginning with empty handed techniques and then with the Ken and Jo. With this, I would now like to conclude my explanation of our way of executing Yokominuchi techniques.